Bible says mankind's first home was a garden paradise called Eden. God created Adam and Eve to tend the garden. He warned them never to eat from the tree of knowledge. One day, a serpent hissed a jealous message to Eve. If you eat the forbidden fruit, you will become as wise as your creator. and man succumbed to temptation. God feared his creations would next eat from the tree of life. He cast Adam and Eve from the garden and gave mankind a legacy of earthly toil. There's another legacy, a longing to rediscover the place where it all began. from the great cities of the ancient world lies a desert island. In the remote interior of the island, only sparse brush grows and a great solitary tree. No water flows here, but the tree has existed as long as anyone remembers. The people who live on the island say it is the tree of life. presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only one, to the mysteries we will examine. The dawn of civilization is thought to have occurred in that part of the world we now call the Middle East. The great pyramids of Egypt have endured nearly 5,000 years. In the epic journey of mankind, however, they are relatively recent milestones. The builders of the pyramids grappled with the same question that puzzles modern men. Where did it all begin? One answer lies in the Judeo-Christian tradition of an earthly paradise that existed somewhere in the Middle East. Biblical scholars have devoted lifetimes to interpreting the section of Genesis which describes the location of Eden. A passage in the Old Testament states that Eden was watered by a stream which rose out of the garden and branched out into four rivers the Tigris, Euphrates, Pishon, and Gion. The Tigris and Euphrates are familiar enough, but what are the Pishon and Gion? Where are they in the modern world? The great river of Egypt is the Nile, thought by some to be the Gihon of Genesis. There would be no city of Cairo without the Nile, only desert. To the ancients, the river was a god. All their great monuments and temples were built near its banks. The obelisk at Karnak took nearly a decade to quarry, transport, and erect. The holiest of monuments here was not stone, however. It was the sacred pool, symbol of life in the desert. Water is a recurrent theme in all accounts of mankind's beginnings. If we assume that the Nile is the western boundary of the search for Eden, it is to the rising sun that we must look for clues to the location of the fourth river. To the east of Karnak is the Red Sea, separating Africa from the Arabian Peninsula. Freighters and tankers have recently inundated these waters, but the coast of Arabia is no stranger to commerce. Jidda is the major seaport, bustling with the enormous wealth Arab oil has brought. Modern office buildings are rising from the arid soil 
rapidly crowding out the ramshackle structures of an earlier, quieter time. Jidda is the Arabic word for grandmother. And although the city is the gateway to the holiest shrines of Islam, it has great significance to Christians and Jews as well. A rubble-strewn plot of ground is all that remains of a great Christian shrine destroyed by Muslim zealots in 1928. The shrine marked the legendary tomb of Eve, grandmother of humanity. The burden of their fall from grace weighed heavily on Adam and Eve. Tradition has it they separated when they were cast out from Eden. Eve made her way across the desert to the place that is her namesake, Jidda. There, she died. Of all the modern Arab states, Arabia clings most tenaciously to its past. It is the land of Mohammed, and long before him, the great Jewish king, Solomon, mined gold here. Legends are not easily dismissed in a place with such a rich history. Arabia is a land of seeming contradictions. Gasoline is virtually free, but water is sold for 25 cents a glass. Part of the price, perhaps, for Eve's temptation. Men are taught that toil was the legacy of Adam and Eve's fall. The same tradition which says Eve wandered in the desert says Adam struggled in the Judean wilderness. In Judea, nomads still tend their flocks in the hills above the Dead Sea. Beyond the wilderness is Jerusalem, where the old ways are honored as they are in Jidda. Pious Jews chant prayers at a wall built 2,000 years ago by Herod. Near this sacred and ancient place, Adam is said to have emerged from the wilderness. A beautiful mosque stands above Herod's wall. It is among the most sacred shrines of the Muslim faith. The delicate Arabic script inlaid in tile is from the Quran. It tells of Muhammad's struggle to return mankind to the purity Eden represents to all faiths. The great dome of the mosque vaults an ancient place with immense religious significance. On an ancient rock, Abraham is said to have offered to sacrifice his son. Muhammad is believed to have stepped from the rock into heaven. It is also the place, one tradition says, where Adam returned to die. The persistent question remains, where is the fourth river mentioned in Genesis? <laughs>